You've heard about the Lawson Smart Office application and you've seen the awesome graphics that it has, the design, and today we're going to take a look under the hood and see which WPF features are being used. Matthew, can you take us, uh, give us a tour of the Canvas here? Sure. Well, what we're looking at is the Canvas and it is an all-encompassing app. It opens up uh, over your desktop mm -hmm. and this is where everybody does their work. Okay. Here you see the taskbar and then you have widgets. Okay. laying out here and then you've got shortcuts and we've got some business intelligence gauges and whatnot. The navigator is how they get to their applications. Okay. Okay. They can add their favorites and create their own menus. <clears throat> then And then they can also drag these widgets around and move them uh, and organize them any way they want, make them smaller, etc. So a okay. lot of uh, capabilities there for personalization. Right. Um, they can also close and open them. Okay. All right. Um, here we have some uh, shortcuts. We can create shortcuts directly on the canvas or, more importantly, we can actually drag them from uh, different areas of our menus oh, or wow. off the desktop it itself. And then I can also go ahead and group those so I can keep my desktop uh, looking clean. I can also launch all of those at the same uh -huh. time. Um, and here you can so see. That was some great desktop integration there. That's pretty cool. We can go into the settings of each one and change the icons mm -hmm. of them, um, and change the names, etc., and it will keep the, the information intact. Okay. okay. And all of that information is kept server-side, so uh, I can roam, have a mm -hmm. roaming profile, and go to somebody else's l l desktop and, and still be able to see the things that uh, I'm wow. supposed to see. Now, Very of course, useful. if I put a shortcut to a, a local file, it will alert me to the fact that, hey, that's a local file. Okay. Um, and so what I should have done is actually published that to Groove, which I can do by just simply right mouse clicking okay. and I can publish that to, to Groove and uh, so use some that So Groove integration there. Right. Now the gauges look pretty nice. Those are using vector graphics of yep, course. Yep, and we have several different gauge types and we'll be adding more as time goes on. Okay. So that's coming out of our business intelligence engine uh, reading our uh, back office apps. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, over here we've got a uh, calendar and uh, people are put their their own personal pictures, pictures of their kids or dogs or what have you uh -huh. um, out there, so that's that's always nice. And then we have, uh, we can create uh, custom uh, RSS feeds mm -hmm. uh, to navigate to different uh, pieces of business intelligence or business apps. Okay. So, so the user can really personalize their desktop. Right. Or their office homepage kind of here. Um, but what if they don't know how to do that? Do you have any help? Sure. Uh, and the first place they typically go is to our video library. Um, here and then I can, if it's a, a video that I want to watch often, I can just simply drag it to my desktop or right. if it's just something I want to watch once because uh, I just need a little help getting started for something. I've got the sound turned off, but uh, okay. it works so with the got sound too. Inline media play there, you're playing the video. And that desktop is green though, so you must right. have some type of. Right, we actually. Going on deliver a few different uh, colors and, and some different backgrounds. We've got three different backgrounds and three different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the jade background and what uh, we've been showing is the arctic blue mm -hmm. and we also have golden grape. Oh, very nice. Okay, so, but the heart of this is really the applications. And up top you see the taskbar, you have a couple open. Yeah. And if I hover over them then uh, this might look familiar to you. Right, using the visual brush and WPF. Very okay. cool. And uh, so if I, but once I get a lot of those out there, then the, I may want to instead use this as a manner of, of selecting what app I want to work with. So real 3D integration there on the carousel. Right. Cool. And you'll see this is a little small. I actually have this uh, form, this list driven form set to be a little smaller because I often use this while I have another screen open. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a large monitor to, to be able to take advantage of that. So what I can do is I can actually increase or decrease the size depending on what wow. I'm doing and it'll it'll cache it and keep it uh, at that size okay. that, that I want to during this session. Cool. So. 
Okay, so you've got a list of uh, data records here. Right. These are these are all the vendors that uh, mm -hmm. that I'm working with, and you can see I've I've got Microsoft here. Right. So I can uh, now, if I wanted to go through and, and edit some of this, do some maintenance on my, my vendor master, if you will. There's mm -hmm. lots of different ways that our users can go about it. Uh, if they're long list of records, uh, they can choose to edit in Excel, and okay. it'll serialize this data into an object, create. Uh, that in, in the Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. I can update the spreadsheet, and as soon as I've done that, then it writes it back through the business logic and security layer to uh, update the business app. So, Wow, great, great Office integration there. Yeah, if I just wanted to export the data alone, I can go ahead and export to Excel okay. or Outlook to Word, and then take advantage of their, all of the features that we have there for formatting and, mm -hmm. and extending the functionality through formulas and whatnot. Okay. Um, I, also, if it's a small amount of data that I'm going to be editing, and I want to, you know, insert a particular column to um, to add to my editing, I can do that. And here you can see I've got 244 fields that I can add to this list. Okay. Okay. I can do that, and I can actually edit it uh, in line, right? There. Right in line. Yeah. But what if I want to edit a single record? I could add uh, add columns here, certainly if I knew what fields that I, for sure that I wanted to edit, or mm -hmm. I can just double click on, on the appropriate record and launch the form. Now it's inquired on that record. It happens to be Microsoft as a vendor in my right. system. Okay. Okay. And you saw before it, it inquired on the data mm -hmm. that this field was red. So if I back out the tax ID. Okay. So, so, so you've got like some real-time data validation going on there. Real-time data validation, and the interesting part about that is that's not coming from the business logic itself. That was added by me um, just for my user ID okay. um, for this form. And it's beautiful because I can then take any personalizations that I make to these forms and share them with other users okay. Okay, that use this form, or a lot of our, our customers, their organizations, they roll out those personalizations uh, based on their best practices. So um, you've got like saved custom styling rules bouncing around from person to person. Right. That's, that's cool. And not just to do validation about whether uh, a field is has got a, a, a value or not. Mm -hmm. We can also style it based on a particular value showing up uh, and, and have it. To really highlight a, a right. value that you And like, any want colors and bold and so just taking advantage of all, all those nice neat little features you've got. Okay. Very cool. So, so now you're walking around the form. Okay, and then yeah, another thing is the ability to to drag and drop. That was one of the interesting pieces of functionality that our customers really love. Right. Yeah, and so that was from one text box to another, but I'm guessing you can also do that from between windows, right? Right. Okay. Yep. And another thing is we have a lot of subforms, and oh. it will go out and it'll build that preview of that subform because I'm more of a visual person, and uh -huh. so sometimes I know I need to what the form looks like that I need to go to to put in a particular value or edit a value. But uh, having this little cheater for me is nice. Yeah. Before I click the button to go find out I went to the wrong place, I can just hover over it and it tells me what I'm supposed to do there and gives me a little thumbnail of that That's as great. well. Okay. So another thing we we take advantage of is being able to take data from these screens mm -hmm. and put them into a URL and okay. and execute that um, so that we can have a pull in a lot of different kinds of content whether it be business intelligence content mm -hmm. or other relevant websites and, and things. So if I'm looking at a vendor, I might want to know where that vendor is so that sure. I, you know, um, or get information about that vendor so I could, I could Google them or map them. But of course, being here at Microsoft, I'd want to use Live Maps. So I can go ahead and click Live Maps and find out, you know, about Microsoft, where you're at. And uh, uh -huh. so it took that value from, from the screen put it into the, to the live to search. And uh, and so now, since it's lunchtime, uh, I guess we could go take a look yeah. at where, where to have lunch, right? That sounds great. <laughs> so, so this is an awesome example of a really complex uh, real-world application using like almost all the features in WPF, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's a huge application, right? 10,000 forms or yep, something? Yep, 10,000 forms. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by, Matthew. Well, thank you for having me.